What is up, Hammerheads? Welcome back to the Forge. Today, we're getting back to the basics and making a leaf. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so the first thing I'm doing is going to start drawing this out into a blunt point. I'm not going super sharp on it. Just drawing this out into a good blunt point. As you can see how it's going right there. As you can see, I'm just working the two sides and I'm not drawing this out super far. Now you can see, I'm working it to try to make this right here a little bit more pronounced in the center because that's where the wideness of our leaf will be. Almost to where I want it to be. About like that. You do not want it to be a really long point, fine point. You want it to be real short and blunt. I'm gonna square up back here just a little bit and then we'll do our next part. So now I'm gonna go where your bump is right here. I'm gonna turn it all the way over. I'm gonna go over the edge of the anvil. Hammer straight down. You wanna get that lip and that shoulder put in, okay? So now when you come out back out of the fire, you're just gonna hook, roll slightly to one side, half on, half off blows again, guys. Same way of what we did with the hook when we were making where the nail goes. Half on, half off flows. As you can see, it's half on, half on the, half on the anvil, half off the anvil, and you're driving the material down to make that shoulder right there. All right, guys, so I'm gonna roll to the side just a little bit. Half on, half off flow. Roll to the other side. Now, I'm moving from half on, half off to leaving the material off the anvil. And now I'm just squaring it up so I can draw out the stem. As you can see here. Now I will still keep working down this section right here in the middle so it keeps everything uniform, but I'm gonna draw it all out to where I start having the stem. That'll be our next process. As you can see, I'm drawing the stem out. Now you'll draw your stem out to how, whatever thickness you would like it to be. I'm gonna go fairly thin with this. I am not pulling this leaf onto the anvil like this. I don't want to risk messing this up. I need to make sure that I keep a good uh, separation between where the shoulder is and where my material is. This right here is the longest process, guys, the drawing out of the stem. But once you get it drawn out, everything else goes really fast. I'm 
to straighten everything up, guys. Now, you can see that our bud, where our leaf is going to be, is pretty uniform. There is a few little spots right here that could cause a cold shut, and I'll show you how to help take care of those. And sometimes you got to do a little filing. But what we're going to do next, because my stem is almost where I want it to be, so I'm going to come out of the fire, and I'm going to start hammering down this way. I'm pushing this mass this direction and down so that I do not start getting a cold shut back here where it'll crack. It's gonna make everything go forward a little bit and then start spreading it out. All right guys, don't come out and hammer straight down. If you're hammering away, you get this pretty much almost flat where you want it to be then you start hammering down and you're going to hammer one side then the other side then one side then the other side left and right up and down however you hold your material then work your way out towards where the tip of the stem will be we got plenty of material here so i'm going to make this a lot wider kicking my hammer, I'm hammering and pushing the metal out. See, you're not kicking when you're doing this, you're not pushing out. You're taking the metal and pushing it and then flattening it down. It's a type of fullering. But you were drawing the material out you can also use your paint if you need to. Right. And once your metal's cooled down, don't hammer on it anymore. It will crack. It's very prone to cracking in this joint right here, where that transition is. All right, guys. So I'm gonna use my treadle hammer for this portion, but I'm gonna take and start cutting the veins in. You can do this with just a regular sledding chisel. And you can do it just on your anvil. Just be careful how hard you hit that you do not cut through and uh, damage your anvil. And if you want to get fancy with it, put you a cutting block underneath it, cut all the way through one or two, and make it look like bugs have been eaten on it. Run all the way out to the end. So I got all these pretty much finished. I'm just cleaning them up a little bit because I didn't like that look. Do one more here on the back. Like so. Now I'm going to do the other side. Now when I do the other side, I'm going to switch hands. side give it a little bit more dimension playing with it that's one thing I like about making leaves is that they don't have to be perfect they can be a little off they can be a little messed up because in nature they get torn they grow different directions they get 
you know deformed in different ways and that's what makes them beautiful so all right guys so i got this old stump right here and it's been through some stuff what i'm doing is hammering in a small indention it's about rotted but it'll work for what i need it to do today you can burn indentions in over time you'll make your indentions but what i'm trying to do is make this a little more give it a little more depth in our leaf so i'm gonna hammer it down in there starting to give it more depth don't ever leave your leaves just flat give them some kind of dimension to them now uh, let the log hit the, the anvil or the camera I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna round this up and I'm gonna draw this stem out just a little bit more so I'm gonna go kind of fast with that part because I'm just gonna draw the stem out a little bit thinner. I realized I decided I wanted a little bit thinner. I'm gonna round it up, then we're gonna cut it off and twist it up a little bit. Hey guys, so I'm going over this side of the anvil. I'm not gonna hit super hard thinning this down. I don't wanna risk damage in my leaf. This is one of those, there are no mistakes, it's a design change kind of moments all right so I'm gonna get my hardy tool out and I'm gonna cut this off and then I'm gonna finish drawing it out into a point and we'll curl it up a little bit and make it look pretty cut off about right there now you see I'm turning the material as I'm hammering I am not planning on apparently there was a worm in my stump and it got hung up in something there we go anyways you can notice that I'm not cutting all the way through I don't want to take a chance of damaging my hammer or damaging my tool. I'll grab a smaller pair of tongs, and then I'm going to break it off the rest of the way. Or use your hammer. I didn't cut all the way through. Let me get that hot again. But cut about three quarters of the way through, and then you're going to break it off. Don't ever cut completely through. You can, again, you can risk damaging your tools if you do that. Right, guys so breaking this off you've got hot metal i've never talked about what to do with hot metal your hot metal goes under your forge all right guys always remember to take your hardy tool out you don't want to get hurt cool down your tongs so you don't accidentally grab them i've burnt myself many times with tongs that got set back in the rack that were hot All I'm doing now is just drawing out this tip. Remember, you draw out square and then you round it up. Draw the material out as thin as you want it to be and for what the purpose of it's for. If it's a decorative piece like just going to be on a necklace, you can go fairly thin. If it's going to be on a key ring or like on a hook or something, you might want to leave it a little bit thicker so it don't rest break. We'll go about that thick with it. Now I'm going to round it up. guys 
guys remember. Huh. Sorry. Flaw the bug. <coughs> ah, there we go. You raise your corners up. Be careful right up here close to where you're. <coughs> Dang it. Be careful. Right up close to your leaf. So you don't uh, smush your leaf or mess it up. You angle, you hold your corners up, hammer the corners down, and then work it around. I don't make my stuff perfectly round. I leave it textured because I want it to look like it's been handmade, but I also want it to look like it's a piece of nature. Nothing in nature is perfectly smooth. Make my finial remember hammer in one spot and just tapping down make a little bit bigger finial now i'm going to roll it around again i don't know what i might do yet i'm gonna play around scrolling tongs you can do this with your hammer guys i'm just playing right now that's the best part about making leaves is you play around with them make them all kinds of different designs and shapes make them look really nice be careful if your material cools down though especially in this stage you can break the stem very easily so i'm gonna go back in the fire a lot of times i'll clamp this in the vise and i will uh use my map gas torque because it's so thin and heat up specific areas and bend those around. So I'm gonna bend this back just a hair. Now also be careful guys, you can booger up your leaf. I think I'm gonna leave that one fairly simple. I like that design, I like the way that looks. All right, let's grab our brush and brush it off. And put whatever finish you want on it, guys. But that right there is your leaf. Let me turn off the forge and we'll talk about what we learned today. All right, guys, so let's get real and talk about what we learned today. Well, we made our spade style leaf. This is one of the more basic leaves, and you will see these at almost every craft show you go to. Um, and they are the easiest thing to make for demonstrations when you're set up. You can do cut deep in them. You can do a lot of different stuff to make these really decorative and look really really nice or you can leave them somewhat basic like this one is and they still sell very well so few key points in making a leaf when you're drawing out your material make sure it's more of a blunt end this is something that i want you to think about because when you go to make an arrowhead like a practice tip or if you're making some kind of broadhead style arrowhead, you're gonna make it basically the exact same way. Now the shaft will be different or where your stem is will be different, but this concept is still the same. So you're gonna make it more of a blunt tip. Same concept goes into if you're making like a small spearhead or something like that. You're, you're wanting a more of a blunt tip so whenever you fuller it out, it fullers out and the, the end does not get too thin. You still have enough mass there that it can be sharpened or shaped however you need it to. When you are setting your shoulder, remember it is half on, half off blows. That is, and again, let me find my block. That means that your material is laying here and you're hitting half on, half off. So you're pushing the material down and you're creating a shoulder. We did the same thing in the hook video. Let me grab the hook and show it a little bit better. 
right here, guys. You're making that shoulder. So whenever your hammer's hitting, you're hitting half on, half off, and it is creating that shoulder. Also, guys, when you you got your shoulder established, and I told you, remember, half on, half off, you hammer straight down. Then you slightly roll to the left or the right and half on, half off blows. And what you're doing is creating a bigger shoulder around and reshaping your square. So you're going to, where it was, everything was lined up. You're actually getting it off center a little bit and you're hammering it back and reshaping that so you can work your stem out a lot easier and you keep the lip over the edge of the anvil. It, you do not pull your leaf onto the anvil unless you're straightening, or I'm sorry, the bud is what we're gonna call that end before it becomes the leaf. That bud, you're gonna leave it off the edge of the anvil unless you're straightening it, or if you've gotta do some fine tuning to it because you don't wanna mess that up. Whenever you're going to, once your bud's established and you drew out part of your stem, remember, when you're going to hammer, hammer back on itself so you're basically hammering away until you get that section almost flat and then you want to start drawing it out and you hammer on the left side and you hammer on the right side then you hammer in the middle and it pushes the material out a little bit more and you hammer on the left side and right side and it starts pushing the material out only work roughly this back portion of your leaf and once it gets established then start going up towards your tip if you work the whole thing too soon, that tip will get too thin and you can save it, but it will take some sanding or some filing to fix that. After that, guys, you just fix your stem, draw, cut it off, fix your stem, however you want it fixed. If it's going on a hook, like we did a hook for a guy, we made the, the main body of the hook. So this portion of the hook, we, we made it kind of look like a stem and then we had the leaf loop around and it was on the front. Turned out really nice. Guys, normally at craft shows, I sell these if it's just a basic necklace or anything for like 10 or 15 bucks, 20 bucks if they're really nice. They average about $15. If they are the necklaces that are my fire starters, those start at 25 because it's the same amount of work but it's a better material. So guys, that's the video. Um, I was trying to think if there was anything else that I need to say, but I think that's everything. Um, if you have any questions, by all means, uh, put them in the comments and I will be happy to answer them. If I need to do another video to show how to do something, I'll be more than happy to do that. Uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, guys. I will see you on the next one. God bless. Keep hammering.